Quickly. Hello, everyone. Welcome back here at uh, the main stage. Uh, you're already sitting quite in front, so thank you very much uh, for that. We are continuing here on the uh, main stage with a great feature talk by uh, Gabor, Gabor Hoichi. He's going to tell you all about the latest status of Drupal 10. Um, Gabor, please come on stage. <laughs> And a big hand of applause, thank you very much, yes. Hey, uh, Gabor, Hi. when I looked at your website and yeah. at the announcement here for this talk today, it said open source evangelist, open source ambassador. Uh, can you explain us, um, before you start your talk on the content, um, how do you um, act as a open source ambassador? How do you do that? Sure, so I'm lucky that I have a day job that I work with people from all kinds of companies and volunteers and try to enable them to, uh, to be their best and try to work together and make Drupal happen. So I really enjoy doing that, and that's why I'm here as well. All right, well, thank you very much. Thank well, you. the stage is all yours. Enjoy. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> Hello, everyone. So this is uh, the state of Drupal 10 for today. <laughs> it's uh, changing every day. Um, slides are open source, uh, Creative Commons. So if you're looking at the slides, there's speaker notes and everything, they are in this URL. Um, I do this practice for several years now to make my slides open source. I found it very valuable because people can take this and present it at their company, at a meetup. Several people translated my slides before to other languages and presented them in India, Japan, etc. So it's good to share um, and be able to spread this information far and wide. So I'm Gabor Hoichi, I work at Acquia as a Drupal Initiative Coordinator Coordinator. So I'm helping the initiative coordinators uh, when they get blocked, uh, try to unblock them, try to make connections and figure out how they work best together. Uh, I'm an initiative coordinator for Drupal 10, used to be the initiative coordinator for Drupal 9 as well. Uh, used to be the uh, Drupal 6 release manager back in the day. I'm a core committer since 2007 and a core contributor since 2003, so almost 20 years. It's been quite a while. I really enjoy working in the community because there's just a lot of opportunities. You can work with events, you can work with documentation, you can work with marketing. There's a lot of different areas you can try out without a lot of risk. So I, I really enjoy that aspect of open source. Uh, yeah, so why, why do we need Drupal 10? So we just sort of just came out with Drupal 9, um, uh, and it's not that old yet. So why do we need Drupal 10? So as a reminder, we released Drupal 9 because Drupal 8 was based on Symfony 3, and there was a Symfony 3 end of life at the end of last year, and so we needed to end of life Drupal 8. So that's how, how it is. That's basically what it is. We stepped off our island, and we are now reusing uh, software from other developers. That's good because we don't need to write all of our software now. Uh, and we share this across the open source community. But also, we need to now adhere to their release schedule. So we now needed to take into account that their Symphony 3 was end of life. And so we need to end of life Drupal 8. So we decided to release Drupal 9 on time uh, before that, uh, the year before, in 2020. We managed to do that in the middle of 2020 and get Drupal 9 out. But now. Drupal 9 is based on Symphony 4, and Symphony 4 is end of life around the end of next year. So we need to also end of life Drupal 9 around the end of next year. And it's this time not just Symphony 4, but also CK Editor 4, which for us it sounds like it's already end of life, but CK Editor 4 had a very long lifespan uh, for themselves. We were late adopters of CK Editor 4 in Drupal. Uh, so they will be end of life towards the end of next year. And this is already uh, an end of life that we negotiated with CK Source, the company behind CK Editor. They extended it for us to the end of next year so we can still use CK Editor for um, next year as well. And so we need to release, uh, we need to end of life Drupal 9 towards the end of next year. And then we need to release Drupal 10. So the original plan was to release Drupal 10 middle of this year, so that would have been around this time, yeah, in a, in a couple days. Uh, that didn't work out. So the current target for releasing Drupal 10 is December this year. 
And that means that there's going to be an 11 month overlap between Drupal 9 and Drupal 10. So we need to uh, run a very tight ship in terms of supporting the upgrade of the community from Drupal 9 to Drupal 10. And that's because of all of these dependencies that we need to update. And we want to make these updates happen in a way that is uh, the easiest for the community. And for that, we wanted to not release too soon and instead make sure that the upgrade path is the easiest for the community. So that's why it's going to be towards the end of this year. And then Drupal 10 security and bug fix support will go on from there. And for how long is a great question. Uh, because um, Drupal 10 will be based on Symfony 6. But before we go there, uh, these are the three options that we considered or we pre-announced for Drupal 10's possible release date. So the idea is that Drupal 10 has a fixed set of things that we want to do. And if we are done with that by the middle of March, the release would have been in two weeks' time, two weeks from now. If we would have been done by the middle of May, the release would have been in August. We were not done by the middle of May. So now we target to be done by September 9th, and then the release will be middle of December. So that's the current target we are working with. Uh, I asked yesterday in the Drupal 10 meeting, no, the day before yesterday, uh, if there's uh, questions ahead of the session. And one of the questions was, what happens if we are not done by September 9th? Uh, the, I would say that we'll start adjusting the roadmap if we are not done by September 9th. So we'll need to look at what are the things that we can postpone from Drupal 10 because the overlap between Drupal 9 and Drupal 10 for those 11 months is pretty short at this point. So we'll need to uh, make the middle of December release date. And even middle of December, you will probably not start adopting Drupal 10 in the middle of December, I would assume is all the winter holidays then. So it's time for people to start updating, but people will likely not immediately jump on Drupal 10 in the middle of December. So that's one thing to consider as well. So to put it, this into context of the rest of the supported Drupal versions, Drupal 10 um, is going to be released well into Drupal 7's security and bug fix support window. So recently, Drupal 7 security support was extended until also the end of next year. And we don't know what's going to happen after that because the extension was announced in a way that allows the security team and the core committee team to further extend it if needed. So in an interesting turn of events, Drupal 7 will be supported as long as Drupal 9. Drupal 7 will outlive Drupal 8 um, and will go well into Drupal 10. So you'll be able to upgrade from Drupal 7 to Drupal 10 um, if you need to. The migration path will be included. So this is the context of the rest of the Drupal versions being supported. Drupal 8 was not possible to extend support because it depends on third-party dependencies that are not supported. And we can't uh, make them supported anymore. So Drupal 10 is based on Symfony 6, which means that there's a theoretical end of life in 2027. November, because that's how long Symfony 6 will be supported. I say this is a theoretical end of life because there's a bunch of other dependencies and we don't know which other dependencies will go end of life uh, that Drupal is using. So I would say that there's a possibility that some other dependencies will possibly force an end of life of Drupal 10 before November 2027, but there's a theoretical possibility that it go for five years. Uh, and this sparked an idea with the core committer team that there is a potential to have to release Drupal 11 two years later and then have an overlapping long-term support release uh, for six months of Drupal 10 and Drupal 11. So that would allow people to upgrade from major version to major version every two and a half years of Drupal instead of the current, ver current approach of forcing people to upgrade every 12 months of minor versions because that's how long we support security updates. So that's an idea that's still being discussed. It's in that issue. So you can go to that issue and see uh, the discussion there. This is not a decided policy yet. This is an idea, and it also depends on other third-party dependencies and how long they are supported. But this could give us an opportunity to release overlapping long-term support Drupal versions that would allow us 
to provide upgrade path um, from major version to major version with the six months overlap each time uh, with long-term supported versions. So it's a very exciting idea of, uh, of reducing the cost of ownership of Drupal upgrades. So now that we know that what's in Drupal 10, so it's generally the same as in Drupal 9. So we basically built Drupal 10 the same way that we built Drupal 9. We put the features into Drupal 9 mostly, and we only put things that were not possible in Drupal 9 into Drupal 10. So Drupal 10 includes all of the Drupal core initiative pro productions, or the produce of all the Drupal core initiatives. So recently uh, done by uh, several core initiatives in 9.4, is the new core theme, Olivero, is now stable and default. So that's going to be released in Drupal 9.4. It's not Bartic anymore. Now the new core theme is Olivero. So when you install Drupal, it looks all brand new. And also done for 9.4 is the Claro admin theme is now stable and the default admin theme in the standard profile and in the Umami profile as well. So in basically all the profiles in Drupal core. So now if you install 9.4, then it will be all new looking in both the front end and the back end. And this is going to be in Drupal 10. The change for Drupal 10 is going to be the removal of the Bartik theme and the 7 theme. So that will not be there anymore. So the, they will look similar to 9.4, but it will not have the old themes that we don't need to have anymore. And then there is a possibility of a bunch of things for 9.5 which is also going to be released uh, in December. There's a possibility of some of our automatic updates initiative uh, to land. There's a possibility of the starter kit theme generator, which I will talk a bit about later, to stabilize. It's already in core as an uh, alpha experimental. And there's a possibility of all kinds of other bug fixes to land in 9.5 and 10.0. The current policy says that the rest of the features that we've been working on will be possible to be added in 10.1 and later. So the coupled menus, project browser, the, all the new easy out of the box features for layouts and media will have the possibility to, to land in 10.1. And also starter template slash recipes and the core module migration, which I will briefly talk about later. These are the two new initiatives that Dries announced in his keynote at DrupalCon Portland. So what will be in Drupal 10 is basically this um, blue box, is all the things that are done by 9.5 and that we believe will not be disruptive to add in 9.5. So because the 9.5 slash Drupal 10 beta will be in, uh, need to be done by September 9, so that's in uh, three months. So it's not a lot of time to get everything done on time. So we are focusing on these things for Drupal 9.5 slash Drupal 10. That uh, doesn't mean that the rest of the features should not be worked on. <coughs> once they are ready, we can commit them to 10.1, which is a branch that will be available once we have the beta version out uh, for 9.5 and 10. So let's get into some of these things. So this, uh, how many of you are familiar with the starter kit theme? Nobody, great. So um, this is experimental. That's great, because now we can talk about it. So this is experimental in Drupal 9.2. Uh, it was accidentally released in 9.3, actually, but should not have been in 9.3. Uh, the idea with the surrogate theme is so far, the Drupal theming worked like this, that you have a base theme, and you extend the base theme. And the extension of the base theme is a runtime thing that you need both the base theme and your theme to be present on the site. So the problem with this is that all of the core themes that we have, including the class C base theme, um, is then used in the runtime of all the themes that are extending the classy theme. So core cannot fix bugs in the classy theme because that will disrupt your themes. So we can't fix markup issues and layout problems, because that may or may not break your theme. And that's a problem because core cannot move forward, cannot progress and adopt new front-end techniques, because 
themes in random Drupal sites are may break if we fix the theme. So the idea with Starter Kit is instead of having a runtime dependence, you basically create a fork of the theme. You create a copy with a new name, and that's your theme. And then we have some uh, affordances to allow you to track which version you copied from and to allow you to track the changes in the Starter Kit theme and potentially apply it later on to your theme. So the idea is to have your own copy of the theme that allows you to have a stable theme even if Drupal Core or any other base theme that you based the theme off of will make changes and fixes to their theme. So this allows better progress on the front end without disruption for your sites. That's the idea. So this is experimental in Drupal 9.2, uh, and there's a bunch of things that still need to be done, not too much, mainly documentation updates. Uh, but we now have a facility in 9.4 to track which version you forked from, and uh, this is in the, in the Drupal CLI command in Drupal Core. Now it's built in, uh, so more issues are listed on this issue if you're interested to make this happen. So there's some stuff to do here, but it's pretty close. So that's Starter Kit themes. How many of you are aware of the automatic updates module slash initiative? Some of you, not many of you. OK. So the idea here is to allow you to have automatic updates of your Drupal sites. And this is for especially for, uh, for sites that, that are that don't have expensive and complicated deployment procedures, right? So if you have a well-built-out um, CI system, CI/CD system, they probably don't need the output of this initiative at all. Probably you don't. But if you have a simple site that you just need to run, you lower the cost of ownership on your simple Drupal site, this, is, this initiative is for you. So the idea of this initiative, or the, how this, the code under this initiative works, as there's a user running with your live site, uh, they are visiting your live site, and now your live site needs an update. And how this system d does the update is it creates a copy, a staged copy, of your live site uh, in the file system. So it requires that the file system be writable for Drupal uh, for this to work. And then it runs Composer on the staged copy of your live site. Then it takes your live site to maintenance mode. And then it copies back over the updates to your live site, and then it runs the updates on your live site, and then it brings it back uh, live. So that's how this works. So this currently supports unattended updates, which basically means that you need to go on the admin UI and say, I want to do this update. It currently supports patch updates, which means it's the last version number in the, uh, in the uh, Drupal version number, so like 9.0. 3.4 will be updated to 9.3.10, that kind of thing. It has support for unattended updates to update Drupal Core on cron when you are not there. This is currently disabled in the, this is a country module right now. It's currently disabled in the country module, uh, but um, it's be, it will be enabled once Drupal org supports package signing for packages so that we are sure that we get the right package. And then minor updates are supported as an experimental feature, so you can update from 9.3 to 9.4 uh, as an experimental feature. So this is automatic updates. It requires a writable file system. It also has, so this is the uh, issue to help test it out if you're interested. It also has a readiness check built in, so it will tell you if the file system is not writable, you need to fix this. It will tell you a bunch of other error conditions when it's unable to work. If it doesn't find any of the error conditions, then it offers you to do this update for you, and then it does the copy, runs the composer update, copies it back, and then you have an updated site. So that's how it works. My clicker is not ideal for today. And then there's the Drupal 10 readiness initiative, which are all the things that we do within Drupal 10 itself. And the biggest of these is CK Editor 5. So Seek Editor 5 is an experimental module now in 9.3, and it's also in 9.4 and 9.5. And the problem with Seek Editor, or the, or the solution that we need to come up with for Seek Editor is Seek Editor 4 and 5 is like Drupal 7 to Drupal 8. It has the same name, 
but it's not really the same uh, architecture. It's not the same system. So CK data four to five, we, c we need to transport the data over, but it's a new object model. It has a different plugin system, has different configuration, and it's a data migration solution that we built. So I need to make sure that all of your data still works with CK Editor 5. And we worked really close with the CK Source team, the company behind CK Editor 5, to make this work. And it's working really well in uh, Drupal 9.4. So I suggest you try it out. It's not yet stable in 9.4, but it's getting very close now. So this is the issue for CK Editor 5. The change for Drupal 10, so this is all happening in 9.4, 9.5. The change in Drupal 10 is we remove CK Editor 4. It will not be in Drupal 10. It will be a contributed project if you need to use CK Editor 4. But CK Source themselves will not be providing security support for CK Editor 4. So I suggest you update to CK Editor 5 as soon as possible. It will be there if you need to use it, but I suggest you update to uh, CK Editor 5. Then the other major updates in Drupal 10 are the Symfony updates. So first, we updated Drupal 10 to Symfony 5. And we released Drupal 10 Alpha 1 with Symfony 5. And this is for deprecation checking, basically. So if you, have, if you use Symfony APIs, you do the deprecation checking with Symfony 5 in Alpha 1. Um, and that's what we have there. But Drupal 10 will not be based on Symfony 5. It will be based on Symfony 6. So Symfony 6 was out last November. And Symfony 6.1 is out as of a week ago or something. So Drupal 10 is using Symfony 6. It's not yet updated to Symfony 6.1. That's in the works. But it will be updated to Symfony 6.1 and likely Symfony 6.2 on time for Drupal 10's release as well. Because they are released like three weeks apart, I think, something like that. So Drupal 10 will be based on Symfony 6. If your project uses Symfony APIs, you need to check with Drupal 10 Alpha 1 first, and then a Drupal 10 Beta later, probably, uh, that uses Symfony 6. And that's it for Symfony. Not much else there. Uh, we have PHP 8 support in Drupal 9. Uh, here are the versions. Nine, uh, in 9.1, we have PHP 8. And in 9.3, we've had 8.1. We are just started to work on PHP 8.2 support. PHP 8.2 will be released this November. There is not yet an alpha release, but this is going to be available soon. And a beta PHP 8 uh, 2 is going to be in July, I think. So we're working on support for PHP 8 2 as well. There's going to be some work. But Drupal 10 will require PHP 8.1. So this is probably the biggest uh, platform requirement change that we have from Drupal 9. We require PHP 8.1. And the simple reason for that is Symfony 6.1 requires PHP 8.1. So we don't really have any other choice. Uh, but there's also, um, it's going to be better for the ecosystem in the long run because this means that when we need to update dependencies, we are not in the danger of suddenly need to update PHP requirements in the middle of the release cycle on a security window. We also have Composer 2 support. If you're not yet on Composer 2, you should really be on Composer 2. Composer 2 is way better than Composer 1. It's faster, um, easier to use. So we backported this all the way even to 8.9 because it's so good. Um, and what Composer version will be required by Drupal is still under discussion, Drupal 10. But for development, we've updated the requirement uh, to 2.3, Composer 2.3. Automated updates requires some Symfony plugins that are built, not some Composer plugins that are built and shipped in Composer itself. So for automated updates, we'll require some of those plugins. Uh, but for any other Drupal component, we are just basically use Composer 2 because it's much better than uh, Composer 1. Oh, and then all the front end things. So jQuery UI. We wanted to get rid of jQuery UI so much. Uh, so we got rid of some of the jQuery UI components in Drupal 9.0. And we worked a lot on getting rid of, of the rest of the jQuery UI components in Drupal 10. Because they said that jQuery UI is end of life. It's an emeritus project. It's not supported anymore. Uh, it's not going to have updates. 
And they also said that jQuery will have a new major version that jQuery UI will not be updated to. So we'll be like, oh, it's going to be a disaster. We need to remove jQuery UI. Uh, but then uh, after we worked a lot on having a replacement for dialogue, autocomplete, drop button, and a bunch of other things, uh, the jQuery UI team announced that they are back from the dead, and they will be releasing security fixes now. Uh, which is a relief for us, because we don't need to scramble to replace those components. Uh, they were very hard to replace, because we are working on replacements in Drupal 9, and we need to provide a replacement in Drupal 9 in a backwards compatible way that is not breaking your Drupal 9 sites and is not jQuery UI anymore, but it looks like the jQuery UI API on the outside. So it's very hard to like appear like the jQuery UI thing that is not the jQuery UI and have it tested and everything. So there was a lot of work that went into these and burned out some people, unfortunately. And now we don't need to do it anymore. So. Uh, they will be staying around a bit for Drupal 10. Uh, hopefully, we'll sometime have a chance to uh, move on from them and have better, more modern solutions for these. That's the issue for jQuery UI. For jQuery itself, we'll use it. Uh, we use jQuery UI, so we need to use jQuery. Um, but uh, we'll see later on if we have an opportunity to move on from that as well in the future. And then there's uh, modules moving to contrib. There's various reasons that we are moving these modules. So for quick edit, for example, it's a nice idea, but it didn't really fulfill the promise. Uh, so there was a lot of potential there, but there's better solutions in contrib. And the core module is not really feature complete. It has a, a lot of bugs and interaction problems with other components, and nobody was working on it. Aggregator is not really a platform that other modules are building on, not well maintaining core, and the underlying libraries have release issues that we needed to uh, move on from. Uh, and then much, most of the other modules that we are removing, they, they, they are not serving as a platform for, for an ecosystem of contrib projects. So we are moving these into contrib. Uh, so these will not be in Drupal 10. They will be available as contributed modules for Drupal 10. So you could still install them as contributed modules. So hopefully, some of them will have a new life in Drupal 10. If they don't have a new life in Drupal 10, it's not a problem, because then there's better solutions, or nobody care, cares about them. It's fine. So it's even better than if we remove them from core, I think. Uh, there's even more modules planned to be removed from contrib later on uh, in Drupal 10. We'll talk about that briefly soon. So the system requirements for Drupal 10 is that we have no support for Internet Explorer, none of the versions of Internet Explorer. Microsoft is not supporting it anymore, so we are not supporting it anymore either. Um, the database requirements are mostly the same. Postgres was raised a bit, and SQLite was raised a bit, but MySQL and uh, MariaDB um, are the same. A PHP was raised, and Composer is raised, as I said. So these are the system requirements that you need to consider. And here's the upgrade tools that will help you move to the new version. So there's uh, PHP Stand Drupal and Drupal Check, which you can use on the CLI, the command line. And then there's Upgrade Status, which is my baby. So I'm a bit partial about it. But basically, Upgrade Status checks the system requirements for you, all of these system requirements, and it tells you if you're not ready. And then it checks all the projects that you have, and it tells you if you should remove a project, or there's an update available that's compatible, or there's these errors that you can run with an automated fix, or if there's these errors that you need to manually fix. So it uh, suggests you next steps for each project that you're running with. So it really gu guides you through the process. And then it has a nice congratulations at the end if you run through. Um, uh, that you successfully upgraded. So this is for checking the status of your project. And you can integrate this in a CI platform. It has XML output or, or uh, text output if you need to. And then there is the automated tools to fix the, the issues, which is Drupal Rector. Uh, that was uh, sponsored by Palantir.net. And they have most, most of the issues for Drupal 10 are covered now. And then there's Project Update Bot, which is not yet running for Drupal 10. But I've been working last week with Bjorn, I don't know if he's here, uh, to update it to Drupal 10. 
Uh, and so we have an in-progress version that runs from Drupal 9 to Drupal 10, and we'll start posting patches to Drupal.org issues, uh, to Drupal.org projects, to update them to Drupal 10 compatibility very soon. So we have the patches lying around. We just need to start fixing some problems and then start posting them now. Um, so this is the status of Contrib as we stand right now. So half of projects uh, that are Drupal 9 compatible, all we need an info file change. 4% uh, of projects are already Drupal 10 compatible somehow. Don't ask me how. I don't know. They are Drupal 10 compatible. And then 12% only need to run Rector uh, and will be Drupal 10 compatible. The project update bot can fix all the info file and uh, run Rector ones and uh, make them Drupal 10 compatible. So almost 60% uh, of the projects will be Drupal 10 compatible if they apply the project update bot patch. So if you find a patch in your issue queue soon, uh, please apply the patch, and your project may very well be Drupal 10 compatible easily for what we can fix out of the problems. So here's the categories of problems that we are finding. And most of the problems that we are finding are Drupal API issues that are Rector covered. So the previous uh, pie chart was projects. This pie chart is errors. So half of the errors are Drupal APIs that are Rector covered already. So if you run Rector, half of the issue is already gone, and you only need to care for the other half, and one fourth of them are info file problems. And most of the issues are Drupal 8 deprecated APIs. So if you don't care for supporting Drupal 8 anymore, then more than half of the problems that we are finding are APIs deprecated in Drupal 8 for Drupal 10. So you can fix them without dropping support for Drupal 9, any version of Drupal 9. Uh, so how fast this will happen? So if you look at Drupal 9 contrib six months after Drupal 9 was released, then uh, the top 1,000 projects, 85% of them were already Drupal 9 compatible uh, half a year after. So we hope that half a year after Drupal 10 is released, uh, we will see a similar number, and most of the top contrib projects will be Drupal 10 compatible. This depends on you, though. We also know that the long tail of projects are not getting Drupal 10 compatible or, or the major version compatible fast enough. So for Drupal 9, uh, we've had almost 10,000 projects that were Drupal 8 compatible, and less than half of them were worked on at all within the year of Drupal 9's release. So half of them were not touched at all. Not just not make Drupal 9 compatible, but not touched at all. So for that, we devised a solution in Drupal 8 to 9, that's the Lenient Composer endpoint, which allows you to install projects that are not yet Drupal 9 compatible, but you want to install them in your Drupal 9 site, regardless of Composer saying that it's not compatible yet. And so that allows you to take uh, the project. For Drupal 9 to 10, that's not possible due to the technology that the endpoint uses. So we sat down and we decided that we either need to have a Composer plugin that allows you to do the same thing and ship it with core, or we need to make the default Composer endpoint more lenient and have more of a loose um, constraint for all projects. So that discussion is happening there. On the issue, we don't have a solution for that yet. But this would affect uh, roughly half of the projects that will probably not, be, not have humans to apply the patch. We need the humans to apply the patches. But if we don't have the humans, we need to figure out an alternate solution for site owners to um, update the project. But the good news is that Drupal core migrations will still be shipped with Drupal 10, which also means that Drupal 6 migrations will be included in Drupal 10. So if you have a Drupal 6 site, this is going to be a direct migration path to Drupal 10. It's never happened before. That's, wow. And then there is Drupal 11. So what to look forward to after Drupal 10? So, uh, so this is basically a very short version of the Dries node from Portland. So we have distributions right now. And distributions are great because they are packaged together and they can really tailor the experience of how this works and what, and what works together. They have supported upgrades for a while until they go end of life. 
but they're also expensive to maintain. There's a lot of distributions that were great and then they went end of life because the people just didn't have the money to maintain it anymore. They are hard to move on from if abandoned because they are baked into your system settings and everything. They are impossible to combine if you want to have an e-commerce distribution and an event organizer distribution and sell tickets to events, impossible to do. And they are not exposed in the installer. So there is an idea to simplify and rethink the idea of distributions and make them simpler and get rid of some of these requirements and make it easier to do. So that's Drupal recipes, uh, formerly called starter templates in the Dries note, currently called Drupal recipes, name may change. Uh, so this will be easier to create because we don't require an upgrade path for Drupal recipes. So they are more like a starter thing that you start with and then it's like if you've built manually, you are responsible to maintain it. If you build from a Drupal recipe, you will be responsible to maintain it. But they would be possible to combine from different sources. We still did not figure out how we'll be able to combine. So this is still under discussion. Um, and they are planned to be exposed in the installer with Project Browser. So you will be able to like say that I want to have an event recipe and an e-commerce recipe and they would magically combine. That's the ideal end goal. But even if they are not combinable yet, you would be able to have multiple different recipes with country projects in the installer. Uh, so I think that's really powerful. I'm really excited about this because this would open a whole new set of innovation possibilities in the installer without them being required to be in core. Uh, obviously, a problem is that doesn't exist yet, but we need to make it happen. And the other thing that we are working on for Drupal 11 is Project Browser, which I think, as the name suggests, is a, is a browser for projects from Drupal.org that makes it much easier to install projects. And with combined with the automated updates thing that allows you to install projects, uh, Project Browser will be able to install Drupal projects from the user interface of Drupal assuming the file system is writable. And so this will be able to uh, pick together these recipes and the individual projects and install them on the Drupal site as well. Um, and the combination of these two should make it possible to install a lot of interesting things and expose a lot of things that people are not aware of in Contrib. And so this will also allow more modules to move out into Contrib, things that are not inherently fundamental to the workings of Drupal and be put into these recipes and have a decoupled recipe and a static site recipe with Tome and then an e-commerce recipe and an event site recipe and then allow you to combine them together uh, for an easy starter experience in Drupal. So that's it for the talk. If you want to get involved in these initiatives, there's Drupal 10 meetings every Monday in the D10 readiness channel and the rest of the initiatives or the rest of the things have their own channels the CKDR5 channel, auto updates, distributions, and recipes is the current name, it may change, and the project browser channel as well. So they are looking forward um, for you to get involved. Uh, project browser and automatic updates are country modules that have things to try out. Distributions and recipes is in the ideation phase. Uh, so you can go there and uh, post your ideas and, um, and uh, see if they land. And Drupal 10 is well in the weeds. We have three months to complete everything. So your help is needed. Please join the channel and get involved. And now we are open for questions. No questions. I oh, see there a hand you there and a yes. hand there. Yes. I will repeat your question. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so the question was automatic updates goes to a stage uh, copy of the site. Can you see the site try it out before it goes live? No. It's not in a, it's not in a, it doesn't have the database and the other artifacts of the site. You could write a plugin that would copy over the files and the database somewhere. Automatic updates is really pluggable. Uh, Ted Bowman had a talk about this at DrupalCon Portland. I, I suggest you watch it. 
He has like demos and code examples and everything about how to integrate with automatic updates. So the default implementation of automatic updates does not allow you to check out the staged site before it goes live. But you could write a plugin that allows for that, yes. If, if content is still created while the update is going on, is that content preserved or not? So the live site is taken down for maintenance mode. So they will not, the, they will not be creating content on the site. They will be running the update on the site, and new content will not be created because it's in maintenance mode. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, what if, so the question was, what if updates require automatic, what if automatic updates, an update requires a database update, will it be done automatically as well or not? It will be done automatically in the unattended manual update right now. The cron updates, they could be done. They are currently disabled because database updates could go wrong. So in that case, you will get a notification that you have an update that requires database updates. But um, for, for, the for the attended updates that are manually run, they run the database updates as well within the same UI. You don't need to go elsewhere. It runs the update, and then it uh, brings it live. Uh, time for one more question. Who will it be? There. So the question was automatic updates. Does it leverage Composer or uh, any updates to Composer? And the same question for Project Browser. Uh, Project Browser leverages automatic updates. So the way Project Browser would install anything is it would basically outsource installation to out the underlying system in automatic updates. Um, so it doesn't do any of the installing itself. Automatic updates leverages Composer in the staged copy of the site. Uh, runs Composer update, does the Composer updates there, and then it takes it and uh, copies it back to the live site. So yeah, it's, it depends on Composer, yes. OK, if well, thank you very much. Oh, sorry. Yeah, if there's any other questions, I will be around all day. Uh, <laughs> so find me. I'm here. I love a speaker who can repeat the questions and also says I'm around uh, during lunch and he can ask questions. So thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Gabor. Really yeah, a great you. talk. Uh, thank you all for uh, joining. We're going to rebuild the stage here. And at uh, 12 sharp, uh, we will start here with a talk show. And upstairs, there will be uh, breakout sessions again. Thank you very much for your attention. One more great hand of applause for Gabor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Here you are, a small Aww. present from us. Thanks. Mm.